What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Abe, and this is not EVE Online, but it is Stellaris. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about this little portion of the UI up here, and more specifically to finish up talking about strategic resources. And it makes more sense to do so from the standpoint of a game that's like been going on for a while. So, um, without getting too into like the politics of you know who's where and what's going on in this game, um, let's just look over here. So, these few icons will tell you, obviously, like everything else in this game, they'll give you important information. Um, this one tells you how many core systems you're able to control. And you can see here, if I hover over it, it tells me I can control nine, um, where that nine comes from. So I, as a base level, I can control three based on how I started the game. Some of these research items and traditions and things allow me to control more. Um, and wh what that means is that I don't have to create a sector to control like you see this border here I've created a sector uh, that includes these three four five four or five planets here that uh, four or five systems anyway that have planets in them to pull them out of this this tally so there are nine systems that I am directly controlling outside of that and if I sort of if I colonized an area of space like I don't know, let's say I took over some of these planets here, four of these planets. I would show as being at like 13 out of 9, and there would be severe penalties for that. And so to compensate, I could add, you know, some of these systems to this sector and not let that be automatically managed by uh, the AI governor. They control what gets developed there, what ships and stations happen there, and you get a portion of their, their proceeds and everything and their income. Um, or you can create a, a an entirely new sector and have it just control that. And so, just to show what that is, if you look at planets and sectors, it's a long list of all of your planets. Specifically, these are systems, not planets. So you may have some systems with multiple planets in them, like the Riador system here. You've got Riador Prime and Secundus, but because it's one system, it only counts as one on this colonized systems list. And then down at the bottom, You've got a sector that I've created here. I've put a governor in charge of it, and this is all that's coming out of that sector. So you can dictate, you know, how many of the resources of, you know, energy credits and minerals come to you at the end of each month. So 75% go to me, and then they just start stockpiling. And you can pull them out for a cost of unity or uh, influence, I'm sorry, and you can put some in if you would like to just inject that because they're, I don't know, having trouble getting started or whatever the case may be. So, so that's what these are. The core sector systems are sort of what is directly under your control, what you're controlling. Um, like if we click on this and go in here, it uh, doesn't look like that has a planet. So let me see here. Uh, Rathador. No, there's no planet there. I need to remember. No. All right. Well... Let's look over here at the actual planet list. All right. So, okay. So, we're in Riador. That was convenient that that's the one I just happened to pick. But I've got these two planets here. And as you can see, like, I can control what's being built at the spaceport. I can develop armies here. And I can dictate what's going on on the planet. So, so those are core sector systems. Next to that is your naval capacity. And there are a lot of things that influence that. If you hover over it, you can see all of the various sort of influencers, um, and not the least of which being edicts and policies and things that you might enact. The star base capacity is how many of these star bases you can have. Now, in order to expand, due to the changes in the game, in order to capture this area of space, I need to set up an outpost, right? And that claims it for my nation. Um, but if you want to actually have it turn into a star base, you have to upgrade it and then it takes up one of these limited sort of capa this limited capacity. So right now there's nothing here, but I can click the upgrade button for some minerals. It takes almost a year, and then it turns into a starport, which I've got all of my starports upgraded here. But uh, it's kind of like a combination military station and uh, yeah, starport. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of benefits to this, but. You, they are a limited quantity item. 
And then lastly, we get into these strategic resources. Now, I don't have many in, under the con, in control of my system here. I gotta find. So if I hover over this, these are things that you're going to have to research directly uh, before they appear on the map and before you can take advantage of them. You can trade other nations or other factions for their strategic resources, I think, even if you haven't researched them. But I could be wrong on that one. So we'll have to check back on that. But so this is an example of one. It'll show next to all of the general other icons that are, you know, standard in you know what you see in your systems here but it'll take a different shape or it'll look differently than all of the others so this one is one of the two terraforming liquids and this include increases terraforming speed by 25 percent um, and it looks like that's the only one I have in my system but we're gonna scroll around and see because these other systems have them there's another terraforming liquid um, let's see there are a bunch some that impact uh, explosive weapons, some that impact and improve energy weapons or kinetic weapons. Man, this one is pretty common. Um, so I've researched them, and if they don't, there, here we go. Here's another one. This is increasing your armor hit points. There's one for shield hit points, um, and they will show up here. And so people, other other nations and factions will there since they're desirable. Like this is the other terraforming. Uh, I guess resource. Um, so this one reduces terraforming cost. The other one uh, increases speed or reduces the amount of time it takes to terraform planets. Um, this one increases the food output of your nation if you have one of them. And all you need is one. So other nations will trade just to get one of those resources for a given period of time. And this one, physics research plus 20%. I haven't seen anything that increases engineering or uh, society research so this is unique in that regard um, but there are a whole bunch of different different resources that will crop up uh, that's the kinetic weapon damage one um, but yeah so strategic resources these are there is no limit it's just a matter of whether you can find them in your controlled space or trade for them so that's energy weapon damage and they all look unique so there's no there's there's not gonna be any challenge confusing them um, this person has quite a few the armor hit points energy weapon they've got three or four energy weapon uh, options but anyway so that's that's what's going on up here and these are things to pay attention to but they are less an issue early in the game and more later in the game so you want to strategically place your star bases as defensive choke points uh, your naval capacity you want to try to have maxed at all times and you know, just so that you can defend or attack as the need arises. And then core systems, I haven't found that I'm like terribly confident in the AI's capability to manage everything. So I usually will develop a planet completely and then hand it over to an AI governor to manage and control. And mostly then, and I give, I take away the ability for them to change tiles and that way I know what's there, I've sort of orchestrated what's going to be there, and yeah, I can just benefit from the resources that are coming out of it. So, uh, that's the last one I think of our sort of early UI-based um, tutorials, and in the next few videos I think we're going to get into um, how to start the game and like things to consider as you go through those early years, and yeah. Just uh, at this point, this would be a great point for you to come in and hit me with whatever questions you're coming ac across. Um, whether it's, hey, there's something that I came across that's called a Stellarite Devourer, and I don't know what that is or how to, how to deal with it, but uh, it could be anything. So they've changed quite a bit in the game like we've talked about before over the last, uh, in the last patch, and uh, if that has thrown your whole understanding of the game into a uh, disarray, then hit me up and I can hopefully explain, and if not, then we can learn together. So thank you for watching. You can uh, catch me and support me over on Twitch on the rare occasion when I'm there at Vinces. I am at YouTube, uh, at U uh, Vinces Gaming, and yeah, you can find me also on, on Twitter if you're so inclined, but I am at Vinces Gaming there as well. So thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.